welcome back so we have been looking at counting so this is we have in the last few lectures we have been looking at combinatorics which is a branch of mathematics that involves counting a typical question that is asked is given a set s what is the cardinality of the set s now the main question is that how is the set given now most of the time the set is not given explicitly meaning the elements of the set are not given explicitly instead it is described in words and hence the set s is kind of understood but the elements of the set s is hard to understand um, or hard to enumerate and so the question of counting the number of elements in the set is a valid important and sometimes challenging problem so for example one can ask things like how many elements in the universe satisfy a certain set of conditions or equivalently how many ways can you draw an element from the universe such that the element satisfies the set of conditions some examples that we have been uh, thinking about is the number one how many n digit numbers are there in the decimal representation when no consecutive digits are same we will be seeing the proof of or the answers to all of this question in this video second one is how many functions are there from 1 to n to 1 to k that are non decreasing that is if x and y are two numbers then if x is less than y then f of x is less than or equal to y the third is how many ways can you distribute n identical toffees among k kids and the last one is the number of zero one strings of length n which does not have any consecutive zero now the problem of counting as you have possibly seen by now or understood by now that every problem is unique and there are, one can apply different techniques to solving a problem and you have to so apply the technique that fits the problem in fact counting is one of the most challenging subjects in math and in fact some of the best works of even the great Srinivasa Ramanujan was on counting and there are some handy tricks and tools that we teach in the set of lectures that one can use to solve them. So here is the thing that we found out for the counting for selection. So namely if you have to select k objects from n objects then depending on certain things namely depending on whether repetitions are allowed meaning whether the same object can be chosen more than once and whether the order in which we pick this k objects matters we have got the various answers couple of videos earlier we did prove all these numbers Another important question here is how to distribute n balls into k bins. And there are a few problems that one should ask, namely are the bins distinguishable or are the bins labeled or are they not? Are the balls distinguishable and are the balls labeled? If the balls are distinguishable, 
then does the ordering of the balls in the bins matter? Can the bins be empty? And are there any other restrictions? Now, at least for the first four such restrictions, we looked at all the possible cases. And we have got this particular matrix, namely whether the bins are leveled or not, whether the items are distinguishable or indistinguishable, and if the items are indeed distinguishable, then does the ordering matter or does not matter. Now, we had one of them that was left unsolved namely this one, right? Namely, whether beans are labeled, uh, when the beans are unlabeled and items are indistinguishable. How many ways can you solve this? Now, this one is related to how many ways can you write the in integer in the sum of positive numbers? Now, why is it so? Let's see. So, I have say n balls, n balls, and I want to break it up into bins, but I don't care the labeling of the bins. So in other words, I want to say that, okay, I will put two of them in one bin, one of them in the other bin, maybe three of them in the third bin, maybe two of them in this another bin and so on. So what matters is that I have one bin here, so maybe let me complete this one. So this is a breakup of this set of 13 balls into 5 pins. Now I don't care about the labeling. So in other words, it basically looks like I have 1 bin containing 1, 2 bins containing 2, 1 bins containing 3, and 1 bins containing 4. I don't care about the ordering. So in other words, what do I get? I get 1, 2, 2, 3, Four, and I know that the sum of them must be equal to sorry this was 12 balls actually yeah 12 so, so this is one way of splitting 12 balls into 4 things now I could have done a separate one for example maybe I could have what I could have done is I could have split this one and I could also have maybe got a hold of this one set. So, so in that case, I would have got three balls of two each, two plus two plus two, and two beans of three each, right? This is three and this is three and one, two, three are two. And this would have been 12. So the number of ways I am writing this 12 as sum of integers is basically the number of ways I can split this n indistinguishable balls into exactly k bins where none of the bins are empty. Right? So, So we denote this number by Pn and the question is that okay, how many balls, how many ways can you write the integer as sum of k positive numbers. So this is when we don't want the pins to be empty and we denote it by P and k and as you can and as you can realize that Pn equals to sum over p n k where k equals to 1 to n. So 
when we ask how many ways can we split n indistinguishable balls into distinguishable things what we mean here is sorry into k indistinguishable things so this number is actually p n k now this p n k is of course a very very well studied problem and in fact srinivasa ramanujan worked on this problem quite a lot and why we don't have a easy way of calculating p n k srinivasa ramanujan came up with a formula that is very close to pnk we call it asymptotically similar and the formula is extremely extremely complicated i want to show you the formula and this will help you to appreciate how hard the problem is of calculating the number of ways one can distribute n indistinguishable balls into k indistinguishable pins so here it is so srinivasan ramanujan gave an expression which was basically this term which not only has some weird objects like exponential of pi so this is this term basically means this is the number e power pi by k square root of 2 3 n minus 1 divided by 24 and not only does it have this thing it also has things like a derivative and the term a k where well, what is a k so a k is this object which is e power pi i where i is the complex number minus square root of minus 1 smk Now, what is S M K? And S M K is this expression. Now, this shows how complicated it is. In fact, this number is not exactly correct because it's a very close to being correct expression for P N. And a few years later, Ramanujan, Hardy, and Rademacher got a formula which was the exact formula for P N. and which was instead of exponential they replaced it with so they just made some changes to this part and keeping everything else same so in fact this is a expression for pn how did they come about come about with this particular formula now that is clearly a hard problem Right? It's clearly a very hard way of getting it. But a couple of things to note here. This shows how important, how hard this counting problem can be, and it also shows that it is of such importance that that the great men like Srinivas and Ramanujan and all have worked on this problem. In fact, this is one of the greatest work of Srinivas and Ramanujan. of proving that pn is actually this number so this brings us to the kind of the end of this whole thing where we can now know how many ways can we distribute n items into k pins now with this done let us try to solve the problems that we had in our minds so we'll start with let's see how many ways does how many n digit numbers are there in which there are no consecutive digits as same now how does the n digit number work so n digit number is something like i have some number a0 a1 till an minus 1 right where a i is are either 0 1 till 9 and a 0 okay let me imagine that a 0 is not equal to 0 because if a 0 is 0 then i don't have a n digit number right 
So A0 can have 1 to 9 any one of those possibilities. Now what can A1 have? Now A1 can have any of these 10 possibilities, but it cannot have the, the number that A0 has got. So if A0 is 1, then A1 can have anything like 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If A0 is 5, then A1 can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. So for every possibility of A0, A1 can have 9 possibilities. And what about the next one, say A2? Same. Because we are not allowed to have two consecutive digits, so whatever this A2 is, a1 is, A2 can have anything other than A1. So again there are 9 possibilities. And by this way, all these n terms can have 9 possibilities. So the answer to this question is product of all of them which is 9 to the power n. So the number of n digit numbers in decimal representation where no consecutive digits are same is 9 to the power n. Okay. Now moving on to the next problem. And this is an interesting problem. How many functions are there from 1 to n to 1 to k that are non-decreasing? So let's forget the non-decreasing part. Let's first ask how many functions are there. So how many functions are there from 1 to n? to 1 to k. Now how do I calculate that? Now any of this, this function can send any this function can send the first item to any of these k points, right? It can also send the second item to any of the k points. It can send the third item to any of the k points. So total number of ways you can get this function is k times k times k like this n times which is k power n. So this is the number of functions that are there from 1 to n to 1 to k. Good. Now if I add the question that number of increasing functions. What does increasing mean? Increasing means that if x is less than y, then f of x is strictly less than f of y. Now how many such functions are there from 1 to n to 1 to k? Now as you can say here, that of course if k is less than n is less than n then I cannot have an increasing function. Why? Because how can I have, have an increasing function? Because if 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3 I have to keep on increasing then n has to go to something like n but n is greater than k. I don't even have enough terms there. So then the number is 0. And if a, if the opposite is true, if k is bigger than or equal to n, then what happens? If k is bigger than or equal to n, it means that I can I can pick n elements from this 1 to k and once I have picked some n elements 
out of this 1 to k, there is this unique way of sending this 1 to n to this set of n elements. Why? Because the 1 has to go to the smallest element in n, 2 has to go to the second smallest element, so if I set, pick the set A, okay. So, so I say I have picked the set A. So if A is a set subset of 1 to k of size n, so size of A is n, then there is only unique way of sending the set 1 to n to the set A. Because I have to send the first element, the element 1, to the smallest element in A, second one to the second smallest element in A, and so on. So the number of ways, number of increasing functions in the same as the number of ways I can select n objects from k, the 1 to k. So the number is equal to k choose n. Now if I make this problem a bit more complicated by asking the main question which is this question how many non-decreasing functions. Now again here so the result is of course what is written there that this can be less than if x is less than or equal to y then f of x is less than or equal to f of y. Now again the idea is simple. Once I pick a subset A, okay, and in this time with replacement, so size of A equals to N, and but A can have multiple copies, right? Multiple copies of the same element. So once I pick the subset A with replacement from 1 to k, then I know there is a unique way of sending 1 to n to A once again. So this number here is basically number of ways of getting n objects from k objects with replacement. And how many ways can I get it? So this is equals to choosing n objects from the set 1 to k with replacement. And how many ways can I get it? Now I can quickly take you back to this old slide and this number is basically what we are asking for is the way in which selecting k of k objects and I am actually asking how to select n objects from k objects but this is just the opposite of that with repetitions and I don't care of the ordering right so it is this number so in our case it will be this number with k and n are shift so if I go back to where I started, this is n plus k minus 1 factorial by k minus 1 factorial times n factorial. Okay. Now let's move on to the third problem. Third problem is the how many ways can you distribute k n identical toffees among k kids? And this is again, I have done this calculation many times. It's n plus k minus 1 factorial by k minus 1 factorial times. Okay. Now let's move on to the last problem. 
Last problem says number of 0 1 string of length n which does not have any consecutive 0. Now this problem is quite a challenging problem. I will let you guys to think about this problem. We will come back to the next class with this problem and this will start us or help us to start a completely new way of calculating. Thank you.